And we are pleased to be joined here on Sports Spectrum. We are at the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 54, on Radio Row here in Miami Beach. And we're joined by former Rams wide receiver Stedman Bailey. Stedman, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Glad to be here. It's awesome to talk to you. It's a little crazy here, isn't it? It's only Monday, and it's quieter as we're taping this. And, and people will hear this interview certainly after Monday. But this is your first time, I believe, on Radio Row, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is my first time on Radio Row. It's a little crazy, right? Uh, not so it's much show yet. to show to show. But yes, going show to show. I mean, we pretty much so far have just been doing show five minutes or so with with one radio show and then moving right along to the next one. So, yeah. so far, I've probably done like twenty. That's a lot. That's a lot of talking. Well, this one, we're, we're grateful that they were able to carve out, you know, a few more than five minutes, but because your story is a powerful one. And I want to tell it in a, in, a, in a through the lens of a few different ways. Um, but first, let's talk about why you're here. You're here on behalf of Zone In. And tell us about what Zone In is and kind of how that's played a role in, in the reason why you're here, but in your journey. Uh, well, Zone In is, is a CBD line uh, that was formulated by former NFL linebacker Lofa Tatupu along with a few other people but um, CBD for me has played a very significant role in my life um, for many different reasons. Um, I feel like you can take CBD for uh, many different elements that, that it helps in your body you know whether you're taking it for clarity, you're taking it for sleep, you're taking it for uh, pain. I mean it just has so many benefits that can essentially just help you and, and your body just all get on the same page where you can ultimately be your best self each and every day. The website's zoneincbd.com, zoneincbd.com. Stedman Bailey is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. We are the intersection of sports and faith. So let's learn about your journey a little bit because I know it, it takes a, a pretty crazy turn for those that don't know your story after your NFL career starts to take shape. But before all that, you grew up in this area, right? You're in Florida. In, in in Florida. Tell us about what it would, life was like growing up in sports and faith and all that. Uh, well, for me, um, sports was always something that I was, I've been in, into ever since I can remember growing up as a child. And um, my faith and religious life, I'm, I am a Christian. And uh, I want to say that my mom, you know, she played a very important role of just making sure that me and my older brother knew exactly who Jesus Christ is. And, yes. um, you know, just the role he played, you know, in, in his time of being here. And, um, just, just dying so that we can all have life. Did you struggle at all with staying grounded in your faith as your athletic career starts to take shape and you start to realize, I'm pretty good at this, and everybody's patting on your back and saying, hey, you're a pretty good player. Is that, is, was that a struggle for you as you, go, as you got older and started to kind of become this, you know, this athlete that's potentially going to make it to the NFL someday? No, I, I wouldn't say it's never been a struggle. I feel like all my success comes from – you know me knowing Jesus Christ and just putting him first in my life so um, I've done all the things the, the small things that helped me get to the to, to the top as far as you know just putting in the extra work but also you know just praying about my, my goals and aspirations um I feel like it has just all worked hand in hand for me to get to where I made it to take us through this opportunity for you to make it to the NFL and what that was like coming out of college and and being drafted by the Rams and I think you were a third round pick and just the the opportunity to come and, and fulfill that NFL dream what was that like uh well for me I mean just a, a lifelong goal that I had um ever since I was a child and you know I got a chance to make it all the way up to the top and for me um such a, a proud moment for not just myself but my family as well just being able to defeat those odds. I mean, I feel like everybody should know uh, how small the percentage is for any person to make it to the NFL. And just being a guy that got past that, I mean, it, it really means a lot to me. And, um, you know, I feel like it, it was a part of my calling, you know, even as far as what's going on with me now. I feel like football gave me a, a platform to be able to reach and, and touch a lot of different people. And, um, you know, just with everything that's happened to me in life, I feel like. Um, I can just be a light because we all, as human beings, will go through different forms of adversity. And, and um, I feel like the big part of what defines us as humans is how we respond to it. What was it like coming to the NFL from being a man of faith? The NFL is very open. I, I think a lot of people don't maybe realize this about faith in, in the sense of having team chaplains, having Bible studies. Was that an easy transition for you? Because it's certainly o overwhelming, I think, for every player at first when they walk into this professional environment where you're receiving a paycheck and you're trying to compete 
But from a faith perspective and being able to partake in Bible studies and having that spiritual guidance, how is that as an adjustment for you? Uh, well, I want to say that, you know, just pretty much having that faith, um, it, 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 it pretty much produced strength within myself, uh, mental strength, physical strength. Uh, just, you know, when I go through certain things, I may feel like it's adversity or I feel like, you know, I'm going through something tough. But uh, I feel like, you know, for me, God would never put place more on my plate than I can handle. So every time I've ever ran up against adversity, even times that I didn't think I would come out clean, you know, I just kind of lean on the Lord and say, well, you know, if you brought me here, I'm sure you've equipped me with everything that I need to, to make it through, whether it was taking the test, um, getting through a workout, and, you know, most tragically, you know, the incident that, that took place with me. Yeah, we're going to talk about that incident in a second. Stebbin Bailey is our guest here, uh, three years with the Rams in the NFL, and he's joining us on Sports Spectrum. Give me some on-the-field memories from your playing days with the Rams. Like, just what's what's the memory when I say, hey, on the field, opportunity, maybe your first touchdown, something that comes to mind that just is like, yeah, this is this is the play I want people to hit on YouTube and watch. Do you, do you have one? Uh, absolutely. I think it's, it's one play that sticks out to a lot of people, which um, for me, we ran a fake hunt return in, in, in my time of being with the Rams, and we were playing against our division rivals, Seattle Seahawks. So it couldn't have happened at a better time. And, um, you know, all, all odds were – pretty much against the play just coming out clean and um, everything just worked out perfectly within that play whereas I was able to catch my very first ever punt return and take it all the way to the house for for 90 yards which ended up being like one of the greatest trick plays of all time that's got to be a great feeling isn't it when you're when you take it to the house and you score that touchdown I don't know if we were home or away but just the idea of the crowd going crazy that's an unbelievable feeling that most people don't get to experience can you what's that feel like uh, well, words couldn't really describe it. Like I say, I mean, for me, it was the first punt return that I ever caught. I mean, I'm very good with catching the ball, but I never really got into, okay, I'll be a punt returner. So uh, I just remember in that moment, man, um, my, my number one priority was just to make sure I catch the football. Um, it's pretty hard to track the ball when it's up so high and, and running at that. So uh, I just, you know, kept in mind that the uh, catch the ball first and if you can turn around you see, you see what, what can happen but it was just a pr pretty clear path to go score a touchdown so for me uh brought me a tremendous amount of joy and um you know at the time we were, I think we were stomping on the Seahawks at that so just in your face kind of moment and um it just brought me unbelievable joy Stedman Bailey is our guest here on Sports Spectrum all right so it's November 24th 2015 and it's here it's in Miami Tell us what happened. Well, November 24th, 2015, um, I want to say just being in the, the right place at the wrong time, um, I happened to suffer two gunshots to the head. And um, very tragic moment, whereas I'm sitting in the car outside of one of my friend's house. You know, I'm waiting on him to go in and get dressed as we were going to head out and um, have some dinner that evening. And some car pulled up and sprayed over like 30 bullets in the car that I was sitting in. And uh, at the time it was me, um, my two little cousins and, and their father, which my two little cousins at the time, one was 11, he was the oldest and his little sister was like five. Um, over 30 bullets, you know, get sprayed through the car. I'm thinking like, uh, okay, growing up in Miami Gardens, is, which is what, where it took place at, um, it's not the best area right now. It's a lot of gun violence and, you know, just violence in general. So it's something that for me is it, pretty common. Like I watch the news every day and see these different incidents that take place, but never imagined that I'd be in a position where I'm standing in some crossfire. And, you know, I remember vividly, you know, just kind of the, the sounds of all those gunshots going off. And I'm thinking like, wow, this is kind of like a scene from uh, Call of Duty maybe or, or being over in, in, in some kind of war. And uh, I, I got shot twice, um, not once did I ever feel any pain. And so with that being said, I didn't know I was shot. Uh, my two little cousins' father was shot 11 times and he's still here today as well. Wow. Um, he was able to get out of the car with 11 shots and, and you know, kind of look around. And his I remember his first words was, these guys just messed up our Thanksgiving. We were getting ready to go travel up to Atlanta that next day to spend Thanksgiving with my mother. 
and we didn't make it. We ended up spending Thanksgiving in the hospital. Mm. Now, as far as faith go w within this situation, um, it was so many little things that, you know, I can vividly remember from that night that just increased my faith. Um, I've already been a man of faith, and like I said, I took two shots to the head. Um, I never felt any pain, and that's, you know, one thing in itself. Like, you know, I, I'm walking around with a big bullet hole in my head, and I, I can't feel, I can't even tell you what that feels like, you know. Um, we were able to be rushed to the hospital. My friend finally came outside, and he realized what was going on, and my big cousin instructed him, hey, this just took place, get us to the nearest hospital. And so he jumped in the driver's seat, and here we are running through all kind of lights, you know, just to make it to the hospital. And throughout that whole time, you know, I'm not thinking about, oh, I just had been shot. I didn't see anything. I just saw that I had blood dripping down from my face, so I knew something was real. I'm just thinking about my friend who was driving at the time who, in my opinion, he's not the best driver. And here we are running through lights, so I'm just hoping that we don't get into a car accident. Right. So ultimately, we made it there to the hospital, and um, I was able to get out the car myself, too, and walk in the hospital and say, hey, you know, I've been shot. Uh, I remember all the nurses and whatnot just kind of losing their minds as they're looking at me. I got this hole in my head, and my cousin as well, he was losing so much blood that he had to go into surgery, like, immediately. Now, the hospital that we went to, they didn't have a, a trauma unit, so we ended up getting there, and they're like, oh, we got to take you guys to another hospital, so... They put us both on stretchers, slapped us in two different ambulances, and took us to a hospital that maybe was like five minutes away. Um, and I remember, you know, just being so calm throughout it all. And in my mind, I just knew God was with me, you know. So I stayed calm. You know, I'm, I'm on this ambulance truck, and I remember looking around like, wow, you know, I'm being on the back of my ambulance truck, and, you know, this is a real situation here. So you're wide awake during this time. I'm, I'm, I'm wide awake, um, conscious. Um, I know everything that's going on, you know. I just thought, like, this is just a crazy time. So I get to the hospital. Um, I remember just kind of still sitting around for a while, and then I had to have surgery early in the morning. Um, I was surrounded by my loved ones. My wife was there. My son was around. Um, a couple of my close NFL buddies flew into town. Geno Smith, who I played football with here in high school and up in college, like, he was there. So, um just being showered with all that love, you know, just kind of gave me a little additional strength to just just hang in there, to hang in there. And I feel like, you know, with me just having that faith and, and seeing my mom there and all these different people, it just kind of helped me get through the toughest time of my life. That's an incredible story. Um, the fact that you're conscious and awake the whole time is, is, is incredible, especially just sitting next to you and seeing the scar on your head, which is a reminder, I'm sure, every day for you and for anyone else that comes in contact with you of what you went through. In the moments that it's happening, you said you knew God was with you. The Bible talks about a peace that passes all understanding. Is that kind of what you were feeling? Because that doesn't make a lot of sense that you were calm. Do you, were you Is that what that was? Um, I guess. I mean, I just, I feel like maybe if I would have gotten a chance to see the actual hole in my head, I, I might have freaked out. But yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my cousin, and I remember him vividly opening my car door, and he's like, oh, man, because they shot you in the head. And I'm like, what? No way. I don't feel anything. So I go to try to bring down the little, you know, the mirror that's in the car, and he slaps it up. He didn't want me to look, I guess, just thinking, like, I might faint or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that I didn't, you know, get a chance to see it. But the way my wife describes it to me, because when she got to the hospital, I'm still there. She's like, all oh, my meat and stuff hanging out of my head. And mm. it's just a tragic scene, you know. But um, like I said, I just was, was calm through it all. And f for me... Like, I, I took two shots to the head, and I'm still alive. I'm cognitively functioning very well. And uh, all of that just let me know, God, you got to be sitting right here with me. Your cousin, you said he took 11 shots, and he's alive. How's he doing? He's doing good. I mean, they live in um, Atlanta, Georgia now. After that tragic incident, him and his family packed up and moved, which I would have done the same thing. Um, I ended up going to LA, you know, they're still a part of the Rams, but um, 
he's doing well. There's certain things that he still kind of battle with, like his one bullet that they were not able to remove due to it being so close to his spinal cord. But, uh, I mean, just looking at the big picture for us both, I mean, we're not supposed to be here based off what statistics would say, you know. And uh, just going through that whole time, speaking about faith, um, going through the recovery process, I mean, I had the doctors that were standing over me saying, oh, I wouldn't be able to talk again, I wouldn't be able to walk, um, and that my life would be significantly, significantly different, you know. And I know that scared my wife to death, you know, just knowing, like, okay, my husband won't be the same anymore. And, you know, I'm just remember, you know, vividly listening to these reports. And I'm like, uh, I won't be able to talk. I don't think that's for me. You know, just just little things like that. And yeah. um, from from the very first moment that they took me out of my bed to walk, which was like two weeks later, the doctor's like, oh, we, got, we have to teach you how to walk again. And I'm still functioning to a point where it's like, walk. I'm not an old guy. I could get up and do this, you know. Um, and the moment they took me out of my bed, I got a big, strong physical therapist guy that they had, you know, just trying to hold me up. And I remember vividly just thinking to myself, like, walk left, right, left, right. And I told him, excuse me, like, step away for a second and just started to walk. Yeah. And doctors, uh, my, my wife, my son, everybody just freaking out. And I'm just like, I, I got it. You know, um, little things like that just let me know, um, okay. I, I had something tragic happen to me, but it, it must be a bigger picture, you know. It, it's, it's, it's something that I just need to kind of sit back and just lean on God, just trying to figure out what's going on. Now, for me, um, like I say, just being able to make it to the NFL gave me a, a pretty good platform, and I have a lot of followers who, you know, have kept up with me over my time of playing, and they, they've always known me to be a positive guy, a guy that's a man of faith. And... Um, just being able to see me overcome all those obstacles, I've had t a ton of people, you know, just reach out to me and say, hey, you know, just watching you with your everyday progress makes me feel like I could go run through a wall. And, I mean, I feel like, you know, that's kind of what life is about, you know, how you can inspire others and, you know, through your own tragedies, uh, just, just keep going. And for me, I know with us being human beings that, Adversity is going to come knocking on all of our doors. Um, it may happen in, you know, different forms, but, you know, whether you, you, you lose a loved one, you know, that's something that creates trauma to you. Me, I had something tragic happen to me, but I feel like, you know, the way you respond to these different acts of adversity is what defines you, and I wanted to make sure if I can control what I'm going through, then, you know, I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm creating a light for other people to see and just know that, you know, you trust in God and, uh, just keep working hard. You know, you can overcome so many things. You were, you said earlier that, um, you know, you believed God doesn't give you more than you could handle, including this. Well, this, means, this seems like a lot more than you can handle in the, in the sense of what you went through, especially knowing that your, your playing career is no longer happening, you know. Uh, but you have this story. Can you kind of walk us through um, trusting in God, but not just trusting in him, but understanding that there is a purpose. Because there's a lot of people probably going to listen to this and say, wait a minute, you got shot twice in the head and your NFL career is over. How can you say that's something, A, that you can handle, and B, that that's God's plan? Can you kind of take us through your perspective on, on just staying strong in your faith and grounded in your faith when a tough situation like this happens? Well, I want to say, you know, over the course of my life, I've faced m many different forms of adversity. And I remember one, one situation when I was in college, you know, as soon as I got there, um, I'm so excited to be up at West Virginia University, you know, continuing my football career. And uh, within my freshman year, my test scores were flagged. And so I had to sit that whole year out. And I remember vividly um, the head coach at the time, the late, great Bill Stewart, which he passed away now, um, he kind of wrote me off. And just being that I had to retake the test, I think in the past there was a couple players that had come through that had the same scenario. Their test scores were flagged, they had to retake it and didn't do so well. So therefore they had to go to a junior college or like a military prep school to, mm, I guess, kind of go through the same process. And, you know, Bill Stewart at the time was like, oh, I kind of, overhear him talking to other coaches like well Stead has to sit out 
he has to retake the test. So let's go ahead and start calling different schools that he we can send him to. Whereas, you know, he goes and do whatever he has to do there. He can come back here ultimately. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, you know, this guy's just writing me off. And at the time I had a mentor, uh, Miss Cecilia is her name, which I feel like she what was an angel from, from God. Um, just a lady who totally believed in me, even probably more than I believed in myself. But I remember her telling me like, hey, uh, I hear the noise about Coach Stewart getting ready to try to make plans of you going to another school, but we're going to get through this. So I'm, I remember, you know, just being extremely tough, um, watching all my teammates go and practice every day, and I'm just in the study lab studying up for the test, and that was so tough. But uh, it came around that I, I got a chance to take the test, and I knocked it out of the park. Like, scored higher than the, the score that they already, you know, wanted to flag. So that was, you know, one one form of adversity that I got past. It's like, uh, I learned, you know, to just kind of cont- just believe in myself, even if all the outside noise or are, are, people are saying differently. And, you know, just just trust the people who, who hold, I mean, not the people, but the person who holds your fate, and that's, that's God. So um, that, that one time there, I got through that situation, and it was all through my faith. Like, you know what, I'm going to lean on, on, lean on God and just believe that I'm going to get past this test, and sure, sure enough, I did. So uh, so that helps you later on when you get to really the biggest test of your life. Absolutely, absolutely. And like I say, just, you know, certain little things, not feeling pain in the car, and then like you say, to answer your questions, like um, – God, you know, I feel like, like I say, he wouldn't give us more than we can handle. So, yes, I had an incident that I I, I was shot, but I I found so much inner strength within myself, you know, to just stay strong mentally, physically, uh, and, you know, for the people around me as well, just to to be that guy that's going to be strong no matter what negative circumstances come upon me. And, um, you know, I got past it. I got past it, and, and... as I was also going through the recovery process, I got a chance to go back to West Virginia to redo Pro Day because I was actually trying to get back into the league. Right. Um, I want to say before I got out of the hospital, which I had to stand there for about a month, I was able to jog around the hospital. Started walking two weeks early and then like another two weeks I was jogging. So just just little things, you know, I'm just building up on all of that. And I said to myself, huh? I can make it back to the NFL. Yes, it's going to be a tough journey, but I can do anything I put my mind to, and that's just the, the attitude that I had. So you fast forward a little bit. I went through training, and I get a chance to go back and do pro day at West Virginia, and I end up running a faster 40 time than I did when I was coming out. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just little things like that. Like, I just not too long ago had doctors saying I wouldn't even be able to talk, and here I am at this here pro day running faster than I ever ha- have before in my life, and I just you know stack all those little blessings up to just say like, well, this was something that God knew you can handle, and no, I did not make it back to the NFL, but there are so many people that could benefit from hearing this story, and I just you know feel like that's part of my purpose of life of uh, just being able to share this this powerful testimony and help impact the lives of others because like I say adversity is going to come knocking on everybody's door yeah and diversity looks different for everybody but this is an inspiring story and it's been awesome having you share it with us Stedman you said you were in LA with the Rams are you still part of the Rams organization uh, I still keep in touch with those guys um uh, established a lot of great relationships within my time of being there so they have a lot of respect for me and you know just just treat me very good anytime I come around, me and my family. So um, I'm extremely grateful for them, the whole organization, and just to be able to still be a part and around the NFL game. um, It's not what I envision, you know, just kind of being on this side of it, but the big picture for me is I'm still living, you know, I'm alive and well, and that's just what I keep my focus on in in my tough days. Last question. This has been really great, and you've been – so generous with your time. Tell us what you're learning from the Lord. That's a question we ask all of our guests. And it's like the season of life that you're in, especially what you've gone through and all that you've kind of um, been through and where the Lord has you today. What's what's the Lord been showing you? What's he been teaching you right now in the season of life that you're in? Well, for sure to cherish every moment. 
every moment. Like, uh, I mean, we all are grieving right now from the passing of Kobe Bryant. And, you know, that's just another situation that, that you just never know when, when your last day, last moment will be. So, you know, really hug and, and love on the ones that people that mean a lot to you. And um, for myself, um, I feel like living life, uh, we should, being able to help others um, is, is a big part of what Jesus did when he was living. And I feel like, you know, if I can help someone with whatever they may be going through, experiencing, that's what I want to do. So I, I feel like that's what I'm here to, to help teach others, you know. Stedman Bailey is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. Man, this has been great. Thanks so much. Thanks for sharing your story. Keep sharing it. It's important. It's going to help a lot of people, and we appreciate you being here on Sports Spectrum. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And again.